Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. This is Think Design Stories. In this series, we will be going behind the scenes on one of the most iconic laptop brands ever conceived and is still going strong. Today I am joined by David Hill, who started with IBM in 1985 and was with them until May 2005 when the IBM ThinkPad division was purchased by Lenovo. Since then, David has held several positions between those two companies, including the Executive Director of Design, the Vice President of Corporate Identity and Design, and the Chief Design Officer and Vice President of Experience Design. When it comes to ThinkPads, there are few people that know more than he does. One issue laptops have traditionally struggled with is bright light, particularly sunlight. Early ThinkPads were no exception and during the 1996 Olympic Games, David Hill was challenged to create a solution to a very real problem. That came about uh, at the time of the um, Olympic Games that were held in Atlanta. IBM was a major sponsor of those games. They had uh, computers that were running the scoring and and uh, all this data and such. And so it was a major, major uh, you know IBM presence there. And there were a lot of people from IBM who are working uh, at the games. And, you know, there's a huge amount of activity leading up to the games to prep things and make sure everything works and it's flawless because it's an enormous investment, you know, to support the Olympic Games. And if something goes bad, it's, uh, you know, it's on the world stage. Uh, So anyway, uh, I got a call from an individual in Armonk who was, somehow rather connected to the uh, Olympic Games. And he got my name because I was the guy responsible for the design of ThinkPads. And he just, it was just kind of a cold call. And he said, you know, I, he explained who he was and he said, but we have a major problem. These people are working outside and you can't see the screen because the sunlight is too bright. And sure, we're underneath a little tent but you never know where the sun is coming from. And, you know, I've, I've got people running around trying to, you know, hold them underneath tables. Uh, you know, it, it was a disaster because you couldn't see. And also at the time, screens were not as bright as they are today. You know, the nit level has gone way up and such. So they asked me if to come up with some idea to fix this. And I... I I asked them, well, what, which ThinkPad are you using? And they told me, because everybody had the same ThinkPad that was on the IBM team, which makes sense because then the IT manager you know, only has to worry about one, one model. And so he gave me that. And, you know, I said, okay, well, when do you have to have some solution? You know, what, what's, what's, what's the time frame here? I, I have no idea what we're even going to do. And it was, it wasn't very far down the uh, down the path, so it was a short runway. And I thanked him and said, you know, I'd get back to him. And I immediately uh, got Tom Takahashi in my office because uh, Tom, at the time, was in Raleigh for like a three month assignment, uh, which was part of a program I kind of started to get. Japanese designers into the design center in Raleigh and I could work directly with them and they could act as a liaison to the team in Japan. So anyway, Tom Takahashi was there who ultimately ended up being the design manager for me in in Japan during the ThinkPad uh, Lenovo days. And I brought him in and I told him what the problem was. And I I had the actual computer, you know, the model that they were using in the Olympics and I said, we've got to brainstorm this. We've got to come up with some way that you can see this outside. So we went outside, you know, on the loading dock. And we're looking at this and we're like, this is impossible. You know, there's, there's no way that you can see this. And uh, so then I get to thinking, I said, well, let's just, let's just brainstorm uh, things that are kind of like this. That you, uh, you know, you have unusual lighting conditions and you, or trying to see something. 
And the first one I thought of was a four by five uh, view camera where you have a film back and they have a, a big black uh, cloth yeah, you put completely over your head, you know, so they can look at the glass and adjust the focus and, and move the, the bellows around and all of this. And uh, I think Tom said, well, you know, are you suggesting making like a IBM sheet or something? <laughs> I said, no, I'm just, I'm just talking about, you know, things like that. And, and he said, that just sounds too awkward to me. We talked a little bit about it. And then I thought of something else. And I think it's called a, a mutoscope. Uh, but it's a thing that they used to have in arcades. Oh, yeah, and the... you, you would put your face right up on this. And there was a crank. And you turn the crank and these cards flip by and it looks like a movie. And they used to have them in, in oh, I don't know, maybe a drugstore or, or, or a carnival or something like that. And I'm talking in the early 1900s and this is like an antiquity. And so I went to the internet and pulled one of these things up and I said, let's make a thing like that. Let's, let's get cardboard and we'll just start you know, taping black cardboard on the screen and make a thing that necks out and you put your head up on it and you look in it and uh, I think Tom was rather skeptical <laughs> you know he, he looks at me like are you kidding I said no I'm serious you know so he said okay I'll start working on it and I don't know about two hours later he comes in my office and says Dave I've I've made one <laughs> and Okay, what is where is it? He said, well, it's kind of strange looking, but it works. And so I went in the uh, shop and sure enough, he'd taken some black cardboard and cut it into these, these um, truncated uh, triangular shapes. It was all taped together with black uh, masking tape. And you literally put your face right up to it and you could see the screen. And you could also type because it uh, cantilevered over the over the keyboard. So we walked outside and it was a bright sunny afternoon and you could see the screen perfectly. There was no issue whatsoever because it was essentially in total darkness. The only light that you could you could see you know, was what would leak around your head as you stick your face up to this thing. And I think Tom said, is this okay? I said, well, I mean, if you're a, a guy working the Olympic Games and you're at a table in a tent, you know, you're doing all this stuff, I don't think what it looks like matters a whole lot. Uh, it essentially has to work. And, uh, you know, oddly enough, there's companies now that make things kind of like this and they use them at like football games and such for instant replays. Yeah. You, can, you can see this kind of thing. So essentially we had proven that there was a way to do it. Uh, then we had to figure out, well, we can't, you know, fold up little cardboard things and give people a roll of duct tape, <laughs> you know, let's tape hundreds of these things on, on people's computers in Atlanta while the Olympics are running. So we had to figure out how are we going to attach this? And then uh, I guess I, I got a phone call somewhere in the midst of this from the guy in Atlanta he said, hey, I made a mistake. There's actually two sizes of thick beds. There's, a, there's like a 13 and there's a 14 one. Or I don't remember the numbers exactly anymore. And I said, oh, okay. Hmm. So that means you need a solution for both of those? Yes. So I told Tom and, and he's like, so now we have to make two of these things? I said, I don't know. And so we were in the midst of you know, trying to figure out how do we make this thing would one size fit both of them? Because the difference between a 13 and a 14 one isn't really that much. Uh, and so we thought, well, maybe you make one that really fits the big one, but it also works on the little one. And then it came down to how are we going to attach it? Because it had to be super foolproof. Mm -hmm. And we talked about things like binder clips and clothes pins, everything you could possibly imagine. And I'm looking at it and I said to him, I said, I've got a, a sock. 
we and, and so and he looked at me and said, you know, like a sock, like you just take a sock and pull it right down over the screen. And so we took this this pyramid shaped thing, and on the back of it, we put a piece of stretchy cloth, and you could literally slide it down over the screen, and it adjusted to the size of whatever screen you had, and it worked perfectly. Then uh, I said, this is great. And uh, Tom started fiddling some more with the model. And then he came back into my office and he said, I got an, I got an idea. I said, what is it? He said, I made it so it folds flat. And so he put a, he put a bend in the sides so it would fold like this. So you could collapse it completely flat. Uh, and so we made a prototype of this and we FedExed it to the guy in Atlanta. And I don't think he had the thing about, you know, 20 minutes, I get a phone call and said, this thing is genius. We need like a thousand of them or whatever the number was. And I, I said, I, I don't make these things. You know, you're going to, surely there's got to be somebody who can make something like this. And somehow or other, somebody spun up the engines and found somebody to make these. And actually, the I wish I still had one. I don't know whatever happened to it. But they embroidered it with the Olympic Games logo and all this stuff on it. And it was it was a huge success. I mean, it, it really did work. Um, there was a hiccup, by the way, in the, uh, in the score tabulations from IBM. I don't know how that happened. But it had nothing to do with the sense rate. <laughs> I do know that. <laughs> But, uh, you know, later on, we were, I don't remember what meeting I was in, but it was a meeting with some guys in, oh, at Lenovo because Lenovo, you know, sponsored the Olympic Games. And I think it was in a meeting with one of the Olympic guys there. And I said, hey, I don't know if you guys need something like this, but I got some experience that, you know, you can't see these screens in daylight. And he said, oh, yeah, it's terrible. You know, we have to put our hands around the screen like this. And I said, follow me because I had one you know I put it on there and they're like whoa <laughs> so they made a whole bunch and used them uh, at the Olympics in Beijing and they sold it for a while on the uh, on the accessory site so the picture I think that you saw has a Lenovo logo on it yeah big Lenovo and that that is actually a production you could buy it uh, version of that uh, unfortunately they don't make it anymore because I still think it has use. I mean, you could go to the beach and you could see your computer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. You know, even if a screen can be like really, really bright, if it's a glossy panel, then any light coming in is still a problem. Right. And the sun obviously moves around. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it might be okay at 10 o'clock in the morning and at two o'clock in the morning, you can't see it. And they're not going to pick up and move the whole you know, row of 50, you know, guys running these computers looking at screens, it's not going to happen. They, so they had to have something, yeah. but it, it was, uh, it was fun uh, to work on this. And it was really just Tom and myself because everybody else was all busy working on the design of computers. And Tom was there, you know, as this, you know, three month assignment or whatever. And I just said, we're going to, we're going to figure this out. You and me, and it was uh, it was great fun. So then we we wanted to get a we wanted to patent this thing because we thought you know hey we invented something here, and so we had a we had a functional prototype obviously, and we had uh, the cardboard mockups and such, and so we wrote up a a uh, a disclosure on it, and submitted it through the IBM patent process, and there's a patent review board that reviews all these kinds of things, and. The results came back, and the number one uh, most innovative thing about it, which they deemed was actually the, the whole, the root of the patentability, was the sock. <laughs> it was it. <laughs> the rest of it, there was all kinds of prior art for yeah, you know, yeah, shade. Okay. You see okay. what I mean? Yeah. The, the, the number one thing was the sock. <laughs> it was just so funny. I mean, I... I had Tom Takahashi go to the store to buy fabric, you know, fabric store. We didn't ever have any fabric. It was stretchy, you know, brown. Yeah. It's kind of like a ski mask. You know, you pull a ski yeah. mask over your, over your hand. We called it the sock. 